This is an experiment to determine the resistivity of a metal wire. This is the wire that I will be using to take measurements for. It's a wire made out of a metal called Constantin. It's very thin, so you might be able, you should be able to see it on with the paper as a background there. That's the wire. Uh, the method is going to be as follows. I will work out the cross-sectional area of the wire by using a micrometer to measure the diameter at a couple of places along the wire, one end and the other end. That allows me to work out an average value for the diameter and then I can use that to work out the cross-sectional area. Then I will measure out different lengths of the wire and use these crocodile clips to clip on to give me that length. I'll pass a current through that length, measure the current with an ammeter, measure the voltage across it with this voltmeter. I can, from voltage and current, I can work out resistance. Then I'll have a series of length data and resistance data, which I can then plot a graph of resistance against length. The gradient of that line can then be used to work out the resistivity. So let's get started by measuring the diameter. I'm going to measure the diameter at this end of the wire first. Just go through the procedure for that. So uh, these are the rods, the measuring rods here for the micrometer. So I put the wire between those. This is the thimble and in underneath the thimble you have the, if I can just get this in focus in the shot. So we've got the measuring rods this is the thimble here, this is a ratchet, and there's a millimetre scale there on the top, and underneath there's a half millimetre scale. And these, uh, along the thimble, those are hundredths of a millimetre around there, and one revolution is half a millimetre, so there's 50 hundredths there. Now if I screw this up until the ratchet clicks a couple of times. I can use the locking lever now to stop the thimble rotating anymore. And now if I uh, have a look on the scale here, I'm less than one millimeter and less than a half millimeter. So I'm just reading off the thimble to find out what the diameter of the wire is directly and it's at 41, so that would make the diameter of this wire 0.41 millimetres. That seems a bit big, I might be on a kink here, so I'm just going to double check that. We'll go to another section of the wire that's a bit straighter. Okay. Now that is 0.41 seven, which is much more realistic for this wire. I know that this wire is about 0 0.30 millimetres. So I've got that as 0.27. So I'm going to write that down. We do want to try and avoid kinks in the wire. <coughs> and look for a straighter section here on this wire. And yet that's, there's a straighter section there, so if I uh, screw on to that, there we go, and this has come out as that's 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, so 0.28. I'm not going to do any calculations with that at the moment, I've got a spreadsheet set up. So I'll just put these values into the spreadsheet when I come to that stage. Next stage is now to get some current and voltage readings for different lengths. So I can put the micrometer to one side. Right. Both those in. Okay. Now I'm going to start off at 20 centimetres.
measuring out length of 20 centimeters. Now, pass the current through 1.03, 2.0, 1.0. One point zero four, I think. Two point zero six. So I'm writing writing down the current voltage. Now I'm going to increase the length to thirty centimeters. Once I've done a series of measurements all the way up to seventy centimeters, I'll then get a repeat set of readings going down. So I'm going to go through those uh, up to seventy centimeters. Right, I've got a set of measurements now to 70 centimetres. I'm going to get repeat readings for the voltage and current so that I can work out average values and I can use that to work out the resistance. Now I have all the data that I need, I'll now move over to the spreadsheet, put the data in and we can see what we get for the resistivity. So in this video I wanted to introduce you to a new word called resistivity. Resistivity allows us to compare the resistance of different materials. You might ask, why don't we just use resistance to compare materials? I'll show you why. Let's suppose I had three wires. All the wires have the same thickness. They have a cross-sectional area of one square millimetre, which is one millionth of a square metre. The first is 10 metres long and made of copper. The next two wires are only one metre long. One is made of aluminium and the other one is made of copper. So I can measure their resistance using what's called an ohmmeter. So I measure the resistance of the first copper wire and I get 0 0.172 ohms. Then I measure the resistance of the first aluminium wire and I get 0.027 ohms. Well, if I look at those two numbers, I could say aluminium has a lower resistance than copper and end my experiment there. But hopefully all of you are good scientists and realise that I've cheated and it isn't a fair test because the piece of copper was longer than the piece of aluminium. So in order for it to be a valid experiment, I need to try and keep all the other variables the same. So, I can measure the third wire, which is made of copper, and is one metre long. Its resistance is 0 0.017 ohms. So, this is lower than the 0 0.027 for the aluminium wire. So, now I can say that copper is a better conductor than aluminium. So, if we want to compare different materials, it so happens that resistance is not good enough. We need to take the length into account as well, because the resistance is directly proportional to the length. I could write this as an equation. But then, why can't we just compare materials by talking about their resistance per meter? That would be fair, right? Well, it so happens that there's another variable which affects the resistance of the material. Suppose that I had a fourth wire that was still one meter long, except this time it had a cross-sectional area that is ten times larger, so it's ten millimeters squared. So the wire is ten times thicker. This means it has a lot more electrons in it that are able to move. So the resistance is lower, 10 times lower in fact. So the resistance of this wire would be 0 0.0017 ohms. However, our ohmmeter can't read that accurately, so it just says 0 0.002 ohms. So resistance is also inversely proportional to area. So if we took both of these equations into account, then we would get that resistance has to be proportional to length and inversely proportional to area but it's not necessarily equal, so we have to add in a constant, which I'm going to represent with the Greek letter rho. So the term that I've just introduced here, rho, it kind of looks like a little bit of cross between an E and a P, is the resistivity, and it's the most accurate way to compare the resistance of different materials. So we can figure out the units of resistivity using this equation. First, let's rearrange. 
we know that the units on both sides of the equation must be the same. So what are the units on the left hand side? We don't know. But on the right hand side we have resistance is ohms, area is meters squared and that's all divided by meters. So if I cancel out the units then I get the units on the right hand side are ohms times meters. Therefore the units on the left hand side of the equation are also ohm meters which means that the resistivity has units of ohm meters. So if you find it difficult to memorize the units of resistivity, there's no need to worry, because as long as you can remember the equation above, you can always work them out.